and gay, not being just full out gay, but hiding and trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and live the rap lifestyle, but really, he's a man fan. He's a man fan. Yeah. I understand Puff's perspective, because I know what it's like to have my man. Puff. It looks like T.I. just dropped a bombshell that's shaking the whole rap game. You won't believe the names he's added to Diddy's infamous list of boy toys. And, and gay, not being just full out gay, but hiding and trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and live the rap lifestyle, but really, he's a man fan. He's a man fan. Yeah. Man. There's a lot of man fans out there in hip hop. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Um. I see how you be looking at when I be around, too. They be looking at crazy. T.I.'s throwing shade like it's confetti, revealing how these high-profile rappers and entertainers have been used for their money and clout. Puff called that Dre. Puff on Dre. I understand that. I got something I'm doing right here. I ain't really trying to get into that with you. This ain't for us. I got some. I got some going on already. So what does this mean for Diddy's empire? Are these rappers just pawns in a bigger game, or is there more to the story? How will these revelations affect their careers and reputations? And most importantly, who's next on T.I. quote S hit list? Buckle up, because this scandal's about to get real messy. T.I. and Diddy's relationship goes way back, and their connection is rooted in the golden era of hip hop. Diddy, as the founder of Bad Boy Records played a pivotal role in shaping the careers of countless artists, including T.I. himself. With this insider relationship, T.I. has seen the glitz and glam of the industry firsthand, but he's also witnessed some of its darker sides. Now, T.I. seems ready to pull back the curtain on Diddy's world, and the revelations he's making have sent shockwaves throughout the entertainment community. Diddy has long been known for his extravagant parties, where music royalty mingles with Hollywood elite, but there have always been whispers about what really happens behind the scene. Rumors of gay rituals and unspoken agreements between Diddy and young artists have circulated for years, painting a picture of a man who uses his power not just for business but also for personal gratification. These speculations raise a troubling question. Are these gatherings simply networking opportunities, or is there a deeper, more manipulative dynamic at play? Is there has has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true. For T.I., being a part of Diddy's inner circle means he likely has access to information that the average fan, or even many in the industry, don't. The fact that he's speaking out now suggests that he has reached a breaking point, whether due to personal experiences or a sense of duty to expose the truth. This brings us to the notion of loyalty and betrayal in the music industry. T.I. could be seen as a whistleblower, but what might have pushed him to take this stance? One theory circulating is that Diddy has been able to maintain his powerful position by leveraging relationships with younger artists, many of whom are eager to break into the industry. In a business where image and connections can make or break a career, these artists may feel compelled to play along with Diddy's game to get ahead. T.I. shedding light on these dynamics could serve as a wake-up call, exposing the predatory nature of such relationships. What would he be talking about? Uh, I mean, what you want, what you want me to say, <laughs> There's a big rumor going around in the entertainment world. People are saying that Sean Diddy Combs and the game had a secret affair, and Diddy supposedly gave the game a huge contract because of it. This gossip has taken on a life of its own and is causing quite a stir in the industry. They had young boys on their knees in the office, man. You understand with that fun boy stuff. It's widely known that the game and his older brother, Big Face 100, have had a long-standing feud. According to the game himself, money seems to be the main source of their strained relationship. I think that there are several rappers that are in the closet and gay. And see, those are the type of gay people that, the only type of gay people I have a problem with. Um, like. For years, the game and his older brother, Big Face 100, have been gradually drifting apart, each forging their own separate paths. However, the latest buzz surrounding their relationship is nothing short to be ignored. During a recent appearance on the popular Drink Champs podcast, the game shed some light on the ongoing status of his relationship with Big Face 100. And unsurprisingly, they're still not on friendly terms, folks. But here's where things take a surprising twist. In response to the game's podcast comments, Big Face decided to stir the pot on Instagram. He uploaded a rather suggestive picture, hinting at the possibility of a more intimate friendship with none other than Diddy. Big Face's caption raised eyebrows, implying that the game's ascent in the rap game might not be solely attributed to his street credibility. And do you. It's a free country. Be gay. You can, you know, do that. I don't, game don't have a problem. 
along with gay people. The picture Big Face posted on Instagram featured Diddy hugging the game from behind, strongly suggesting a deeper connection between the two than previously thought. As the saga unfolds, it's worth noting that over the years, several industry veterans have openly shared their opinions and speculations about Diddy's S, adding yet another layer of intrigue to this unfolding story. on my head, but it's a lot of motherfuckers out here, man. The people wasn't doing right by and, you know, doing things to these young girls. Indeed, the drama surrounding Diddy's S orientation isn't new. In 2018, 50 Cent made headlines when he publicly speculated that Diddy's S might be more diverse than what he portrays publicly. Even four years prior to that, 50 Cent had raised eyebrows by suggesting that both Diddy and Rick Ross were concealing their true S. As of 2022, both men continue to present themselves as hetero S. However, in the midst of this recent controversy, Big Face quickly realized the potential consequences of his controversy post and swiftly deleted it. Nevertheless, the damage had already been done, leaving the public buzzing with speculation and intrigue. One person wrote about Diddy saying, Puff was probably the first victim and wanted to have that kind of power over other PPL, so he takes advantage of his position of power. Diddy's journey in the music industry has indeed been remarkable, initially celebrated for his music production prowess and his knack for managing exceptional artists. However, in recent times, it appears that his reputation has been shifting away from his musical achievements towards his personal life, particularly his romantic endeavors. There has been growing speculation that Diddy has a penchant for pursuing younger men within the industry, and it's rumored that he has a particular method for approaching such relationships, often luring them into intimate encounters within the confines of his car. You will definitely be upset. You will definitely be upset because you will be outstanding, mother. <laughs> Diddy has crafted a public image as a devoted father and family-oriented individual, but recent revelations about his private life paint a starkly contrasting picture of the music producer. Multiple reports have surfaced suggesting that Diddy has actively pursued encounters with young, hetero S male rappers, sometimes employing coercive tactics to engage them in S acts. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, 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 when you put my daddy, I like when you're you scrambling right and scraping. Right the rapper Jaguar has also recounted a disturbing incident from her perspective, in which she claims that she witnessed an encounter involving Diddy and the emerging singer Christopher William, where someone allegedly walked in on Diddy during a S act. Such claims are indeed shocking and potentially damaging to the reputation of those involved. She walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in, and when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing for on Puff. Claims and rumors about Diddy's alleged actions and preferences have generated considerable attention and speculation. In this case, there are reports suggesting that he has a proclivity for engaging in unusual activities with straight men, with allegations even extending to incidents involving well-known figures like rapper Method Man in Los Angeles. Allegedly, Method Man was seated in a Los Angeles nightclub when Diddy approached him. It appeared that Diddy was drawn to him as he then engaged in an unusual unusual approach to express interest. Rather than engaging in further conversation and extending a straightforward invitation to his place, Diddy opted for an unconventional approach. He dispatched another individual to coax Method Man into joining them in a vehicle. It's possible that this unconventional tactic is a part of Diddy's personal amusement, involving placing straight individuals in potentially uncomfortable situations. One person wrote, Money is the root of all evil. PPP will have choices they play the game because they don't want to be broke, then still get played in the end after they have given their souls, then talk about it after it's done. Another rapper, Zebit, has recently revealed a rather unsettling encounter involving Diddy. Following an enjoyable evening at Diddy's residence, they embarked on a night out to a club, only to discover that this particular establishment was unlike any other they had frequented before. To their surprise, it became evident that the club they entered was a rather overtly gay bar. So then we, you know, we go to the house and then, you know, uh, he, he invited us to the house because he wanted to go to the club afterwards, right? I was like, right. okay, cool. Zebit had been enjoying his night out, seeking a good time and some fun at the club. However, his attention was suddenly drawn to an unexpected sight when someone pointed out that men were openly engaging and kissing within the venue. Initially taken aback, Zebit didn't dwell on it too much until he witnessed another man confidently dancing completely naked in the midst of the club, leaving him utterly astonished. She pointed over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, the f*** is this? Furthermore, Zebit hinted at a distressing experience he had while being drawn into the party by Diddy. Hey man, you know the um 
that that girl you you know about the girl you were. I was like, yeah, man, yeah, everybody know about you know what I'm saying? What's happening? You know, he's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. Diddy, with audacity, would inquire about the guest's interest in women and then expose them to the unconventional spectacle that typically unfolded at his gatherings. In addition, there was a peculiar anecdote shared involving Diddy discussing the infamous Superhead, which added to the intrigue surrounding his parties. Oh. Puffy tells you he that gonna, she... She will videotape you with fingers in the booty. And, and I was like, he... what the f*** does that mean? Yeah, you know what does what that saying? mean? So then, so then I go back in the house and I ask her, what the f*** are you talking about? The question arises as to why anyone would choose to comment on another individual who is not causing any disturbance. However, in this context, it pertains to Diddy, who has consistently projected an image of superiority over younger rappers. Additionally, Zibit alluded to the possibility that Diddy may have had some involvement or encounter with Superhead at the present moment. He said, I guess he got some prior incident with her that he don't want nobody to know about. What's even more frustrating is that despite all the commotion and controversy, it seems that Diddy remains indifferent to the situation. I was like, this ain't no damn way. This my motherfucking natural. I don't need to be ashamed of what the fuck is. You might be curious about Diddy's choice to wear a wig and his comfort with it. Notably, 50 Cent seems to have some insights into this matter. Diddy was spotted sporting a rather extravagant wig as he listened to Travis Scott's latest album, Birds in the Trap Sing McKnight, and shared the moment on his Snapchat account. Atlanta, we come in. Get my Okay, yeah, Atlanta, I'm bringing something special. Hey, yo, Toronto, Cash, what up? XO. And to this date, some fans still say that Diddy was acting like a fool in this wig. One of them said, Diddy is a fool. Hilarious. And 50 Cent also sees the opportunity to make fun of Puffy for it on his Instagram page. He posted the video on his Instagram and wrote, What the F, man? Indeed, this incident is not the first time that 50 Cent has criticized or taken a jab at Diddy. There seems to be a history of public exchanges or comments between the two. You know what 50 gonna say to you when he sees you? What? I heard Diddy touched your butt. Oh, hey, man, yo, what the? <laughs> oh no, I don't know that that was going on. You know, I can't wait to run into him again. See, what you gonna say to him? Phil? Puffy was playing with your booty in my hand. It's plausible that 50 Cent's comments and observations stem from personal experiences or information he may have about Diddy. Additionally, his previous posts, like the one featuring Diddy and Rick Ross performing together, may have been intended to suggest that Diddy was concealing something from the public eye, further fueling speculation and intrigue. Oh, Rick Ross. <laughs> Rick Ross. The image you're describing, taken at an unusual angle, seemingly depicting an intimate moment between Diddy and another individual, can easily create misconceptions. Furthermore, Diddy's choice of attire, a pink shirt, while embracing a former record executive in a similar outfit, could have added to the speculation or intrigue surrounding the situation, especially given the caption, I ain't saying nothing, but something ain't right. Lamau, accompanying the photo. The situation escalated further when rumors circulated that Diddy had made advances towards several straight artists in the hip-hop industry, including 50 Cent. Given 50 Cent's reputation for speaking candidly and not shying away from discussing such matters, it's no surprise that he would openly recount the entire incident in the media if he indeed experienced such advances from Diddy. Paul, okay. you're telling me we got a kick in this and he's like, yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I paid for it. And I was like, what the f this just said? <laughs> it has been suggested that Diddy has a reputation for using the act of taking his love interest shopping as a way to convey his attraction and desire for a romantic or physical connection. Therefore, apparently when Diddy made the offer to take 50 Cent shopping, it understandably left 50 Cent feeling surprised and uncomfortable. Fortunately, by that stage in his career, 50 Cent had developed the confidence and self-assuredness to decline such a assertive advances. And now the game's suggestions seem to be relevant with these theories and conspiracies. And he knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Biggie, you put hot on him. That's the next to the fight if you want. The game, who has previously commented on the secrecy of S orientations in the rap industry, had refrained from naming names until his recent appearance on Drink Champs. During the show, he revealed that Diddy showered him with gifts for two years, which some fans interpreted as potential evidence of long-standing allegations about Diddy's behavior. This disclosure added fuel to the ongoing speculation and discussions surrounding Diddy's personal life within the industry. Following the resurfacing of the game's interview, some speculation emerge.
charged, with individuals even theorizing that it was Diddy who may have given Usher an STD. Usher had previously faced allegations of transmitting an STD to one of his partners. In 2017, leaked documents indicated that Usher had been carrying the STD since 2009 or 2010 and had infected his female partner in 2012. These documents further revealed that Usher had covered the woman's medical expenses and settled a civil lawsuit with her for a substantial sum of $1.1 million. Uh, he's responded to the lawsuit from the woman who claims that uh, they hooked up a couple of times this year and that she actually he gave her herpes yes. she says yes that's what she says Is it? it's worth noting that the game's claims about high profile rappers living secret lives and using their womanizer personas as a cover were made years before the usher std allegations and the resurfacing of his interview these claims while intriguing to some remain largely speculative and have not been substantiated with specific names or evidence he said beyonce should have said who run the world gays because they're everywhere and rightfully so do you it's a free country be gay you can do that game don't have a problem with gay people and then jamie fox there's even a crazy story floating around that diddy once made fox play naked basketball yep you read that right and ked basketball diddy known for his over-the-top parties and wild ideas supposedly thought this would be the perfect way to break the ice and make the night unforgettable if you want to know like who was probably at these games just look at like who p diddy and jamie fox have been hanging around for years especially the like the super successful ones can you imagine being at that party diddy definitely knows how to throw an unforgettable bash but the big question is did jamie fox really go through with it well it looks like jamie was a good sport about the whole thing he didn't back down and actually jumped into that game of naked basketball he would invite over a lot of like hollywood's elite to his house for a basketball game, but it was men only. That's definitely pushing boundaries and stepping way out of your comfort zone. But when you're hanging out with Diddy and other A-listers, anything can happen, right? The thing is, this wasn't Jamie's first rodeo at one of Diddy's infamous parties. In fact, an old clip popped up online last year where Jamie dropped some shocking details about one of Diddy's creepy gatherings. The big cannon, like, yo, Puff, I should document this shit, right? Yo, what's up, Playboy? <laughs> What, what, what you talking about? I said, no, I should get this, man. You, files for the whole nine. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. Excuse me. So I get the... <laughs> This wasn't just any party, it cost a staggering one and a half million bucks, with A-list celebs rolling up in their luxury cars. Jamie followed Diddy into this extravagant pool party, and the first person his camera caught? None other than the famous Hollywood therapist, Dr. Ruth. And I look up and I see Dr. Ruth. I don't know if you know who that is. The the s the lady. The s lady. I see Dr. Ruth. I said, Miss Ruth, could you please come over here? This guy by the name of Sean P. Diddy Combs. I need you to come meet him. I need this for my camera. Sensing a golden moment, Jamie managed to get Dr. Ruth to have an impromptu chat with Diddy right on camera. Then, out of nowhere, they hit the dance floor by the pool, vibing to Beyonce's crazy in love. The energy was electric, and the crowd was loving it. The majority of individuals have the desire to attend an after party where celebrities will be present. So so that they may interact with those in the industry. Although Fabulous has attended a number of events in his day, it appears that he feels that some of those parties did not live up to the expectations that were set for them. So, <laughs> so Fab, how was your birthday, man? What was your wish mm. for this year? Now, if you observe, Fabulous is surrounded by an obvious cloud of melancholy among the crowd. He seems to be carrying an invisible burden, which makes us sympathetic to his attitude. He is quietly enjoying a piece of cake while projecting an air of seclusion. Moreover, he appears reluctant to meet the eyes of others around him as if he is really uneasy. Perhaps Diddy's presence casts a shadow over Fabulous consciousness in this enigmatic tapestry of feelings, subtly influencing his current state of mind. Could the rupture be the result of a conflict between their artistic goals or a personal issue? One may only guess because the truth lies deep within their shared past. But Diddy kept questioning him. So Fab, how was your birthday, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and what, your and birthday. What, was your, what was your wish mm. for this year? Um... Elf. My birthday was cool. Well, yeah. Everything started when the rapper known as Ghetto Fabulous asked his fans if they too had ever felt forced into attending an after party. Fabulous said, you really want to go home or back to the room, but you don't want to be be the turn down to the turn up. Fans were thinking about his queries when Fabulous revealed that he had a very absurd experience with Diddy, who kept Fabulous partying until the early hours of the next morning. I told Diddy I was going to the bathroom and slid once, he admitted. It was 7 a.m. and this NG DJ was still turned. This story was all about Diddy forcing him to go to parties, which can be seen here. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? 
I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, you know. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I. However, many fans speculated that the game was referencing Diddy due to his history of being linked to multiple women and having seven children with four different women. There has been significant conjecture suggesting that Diddy may have used these relationships as a way to deflect from rumors about his S orientation by having numerous children to divert public attention. The first of all, the first of all is is there has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true. Indeed, Diddy's former bodyguard, Jean Deal, hinted in an interview that Diddy's late wife, Kim Porter, was aware of Diddy's infidelity, which included relationships with both women and men. He picked up uh, some things from up here on my left side, and then he, he picked like a, quite a few of them down. I'm like, you okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there, I, and it said butt plugs. Jean also suggested that Kim Porter may have been planning to reveal Diddy's secrets in a book she was writing before her untimely passing. He implied that Diddy might be relieved now that Kim is no longer alive because she held knowledge of his deepest and darkest secrets. Returning to what the game mentioned in his interview with Vlad, when asked if he had previously collaborated with a gay rapper without being aware of it, the game stated that he had indeed worked with someone who made a concerted effort to conceal their S by engaging in relationships with numerous women. He said, possibly yeah, and not being just full out gay, just pretending he loves girls and lives the rap lifestyle, but really he's a man fan. There's a lot of man fans out there in hip hop. I see how you ends be looking at ends you're around too. They be looking at N ends crazy. But it also opens up a larger conversation about complicity within the industry. Are these artists innocent victims or do they bear some responsibility for their choices? TI's commentary might prompt a necessary reflection on the pressures young artists face and the lengths they'll go to for success. If Diddy is indeed using his influence to exploit these connections, how many others are doing the same? This could lead to a ripple effect, prompting other artists to speak out and share their experiences, potentially shifting the landscape of the industry as we know it. The controversy also touches on sensitive issues related to S and power dynamics within the entertainment industry. The idea of gay rituals isn't just about Diddy's preferences, it challenges societal norms and expectations about masculinity in his hip-hop culture. T.I. and others speaking out could help pave the way for more open discussions about S and consent in a community often resistant to such conversations. Wasn't Puffy interested in, in working with you also? Yeah, Puff, I was running around with Puff uh, for a minute, but we was just uh, we was just partying, man. Puff liked to party. With the timing of T.I.'s comments, it's worth considering whether he's trying to position himself as a leader and advocate for change, or if there's something more personal motivating his revelation. Is he attempting to settle old scores with Diddy, or is he genuinely concerned for the younger generation of artists who might fall into the same traps he once navigated? T.I.'s past issues with the law and his own struggles with fame add layers to his credibility. He might see this as an opportunity to redefine his narrative and take a stand against what he perceives as systemic issues within the industry. As this drama unfolds, fans and industry insiders alike are left wondering what will come next. Will more artists join TI in speaking out against Diddy and the exploitative practices that may exist in the industry? How will Diddy respond to these allegations, especially with the weight of his celebrity status hanging in the balance? And perhaps most importantly, what does this mean for the future of hip hop and the relationships within it? With TI at the forefront, this controversy could ignite a firestorm of discussions surrounding power, S, and accountability in the music industry. The potential for change is palpable, but the road ahead is fraught with uncertainty. One things for sure. This story is just beginning, and the revelations are bound to get even more explosive. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.